descriptive statistics and exploratory data analysis. It sounds like a mouthful, right? In this video, we're going to give you a practical tutorial on how to start exploring a data set for meaningful insights. We're also going to teach you how to set up a pivot table. We're working with a professional data analyst here, Dr. Humero, who's going to take you through every step of the tutorial. This is tutorial three of Career Foundry's Data Analytics short course. If you haven't already, you can sign up for free to join the course in the description below. It's a snappy five lesson course and we'll be covering everything that you need to know to get your first flavor of what it is like to be a data analyst. I'm gonna hand over now to Dr. Humera and she's gonna take you through exploratory data and descriptive statistics. Over to you, Dr. Humera. Thanks a lot, Will. Hi everyone again, this is Dr. Humera and I've been associated with data analysis for over 20 years now both in academia and in the industry. In this tutorial, we will cover exploratory data analysis and descriptive statistics. We have already seen in the previous tutorial how to clean up the data, and now we are good to go and dig deeper into the data analysis. Descriptive data analysis is actually very important because it gives you the first insights into your data. It will tell you how your data looks like, if there are any outliers, which means there is anything which is not right. While doing data cleanup, we have already seen how to remove duplicates and how to remove missing values. But there is much more to the data. Some further things might be off, which we can only identify if we look into the data from its descriptive point of view. Descriptive analysis will include very simple mathematical operations like identifying the mean and average of the uh, values. We'll find the maximum, minimum, and some kind of median. And these analysis will be good enough to get us started and let us know how does the data look like. This will be enough to allow us to explore the data further and make sense out of it. Let me give you a very simple example. Imagine Google wants to invest in a new data center where they only want to keep their most frequently asked questions. How would they know what are their most frequently asked questions? This is actually where this kind of analysis is going to help us. So let's now dive deeper into our data set and actually see what the New York taxi data set has to tell us. So one question, you mentioned outliers, but what exactly do you mean by that? So outliers are actually data points which do not lie within the normal range of the data. So imagine if you are collecting uh, heights of different people and you have a height range in six and seven feet, between six and seven feet. And now if you notice a height of a person as 10 feet, you can instantly see that this is an outlier because it doesn't fit into the normal range and it's not the right, it couldn't be the right one. So outliers are those which are like lying outside of the normal range. Okay, it sounds like some kind of um, specified anomaly then. You're totally right. Uh, outliers actually indicate an anomalous behavior, definitely. So without further ado, let's dive into tutorial three. We'll be looking at the data in more depth and doing descriptive statistics and exploratory analysis. Here we are back at our Google Sheet and looking at our New York taxi data set. In the previous session, we actually cleaned up the data and removed the duplicates and removed missing values. Now let's have a look at what descriptive analysis has to tell us and explore the data a bit more. We'll start with the descriptive analysis. The descriptive statistics is important because it gives us insight into the patterns of the data. Some of the methods used here are, for example, the mean of the data, the average, the median, the minimum and maximum values. And these are actually good enough to get us started, to get a feel of what the data is about. So let's pick up a couple of columns here, some of the parameters that we find interesting, and we'll have a look at what do they tell us. If we look at the column names, in column number K, we have an interesting parameter. That's basically the fair amount. And let's try to have a look at, for example, for these taxi services, what is the average fare that people are paying? What's the minimum fare that they are paying? What's the maximum one and so on and so forth. To do this, we'll begin with creating a new sheet first so that our descriptive statistics is separate from the raw data. To create a new sheet, you simply go to the bottom left of the screen and add sheet. You see a sheet one, you can double click on it and rename it to the name that you want to give. Let's give it a name, descriptive statistics. And you hit enter. At this point in time, we want to calculate four elements that we just spoke about. So let's first identify what are the 
different stats that we want to calculate. So we give a heading stats and we also give the heading for what parameter are we talking about? So it was fair amount, so we can take the same. It doesn't have to be the exact same spelling, but just representative of what we are talking about. So let's say we want to find out the mean. So the mean fair and the median. Both mean and median actually represent kind of the average of the data, but mean is very sensitive to the extreme position. So in mean, you basically add all the elements and divide by the number of elements. So in case there are outliers, then the mean might be a bit disturbed. In that case, median actually helps. In case of median, basically all the data points are arranged in order and the central point is picked up. We'll have a look and see what does that mean. We are also interested in identifying the minimum fare that someone paid and the maximum. So we can give the heading min and max. Now let's do some calculations. The Google spreadsheet actually allows it to make all these calculations very easy. And this is the same for any other data analysis tool that you use. You start typing a formula, which you can start by pressing equal to and typing the formula that you want to type in. In this case, it's the average. So you start typing average and you can autocomplete by hitting enter. Now you want to get average of what? The average that you want to take off is in the other sheet. So you select the original sheet and the column K. By hitting the column name K, it will basically select the whole column and include all the values that are in column K. Once you are done, you can close the bracket and hit enter. And here you see the fair amount calculated automatically. It's really as simple as it looks like. And in a similar way, we can calculate the median, min, and max. So to start calculating median, you start again with the equal to sign, start typing the median, autocomplete by hitting enter, go to the original sheet, select column K, close the bracket, and hit enter. And here you have 9.5. As you can already see, this actually shows that maybe some people were paying very low or very high fare, but the normal scenario was that people were paying around 9.5 as an average fare. To calculate the minimum, you start typing with the equal to sign and type min. Again, go to the first sheet to select the column K. You can actually do this for any column that you want to do. Right now, we are interested in the fair amount. So this is where we are focusing on. Oh, you already see that there is a minimum value of minus 243. This, this doesn't look right. We'll explore it in a bit, but let's first calculate the max. I'm sure you are already appreciating the importance of this descriptive statistical analysis, because just by calculating some basic numbers, you are able to identify already a problem, a further problem with your data, where the amount of fare that somebody had paid is not a correct number. What do we want to do? In its simplest form, we would like to remove those values where the numbers are not right. So let's just go back to our original data and delete those values. You already know how to filter the data for specific values. We have already done that for missing values, that is blanks. And now we can do this for this negative number. But wait a second. It's quite possible that minus 243 is not the only negative number in the data set. There might be others as well. So we can do one more thing that will actually help us to identify all those negative numbers and remove them. And for that, let's first go to our original data. One simple thing that we can do here is actually to sort our data with respect to the fair amount. By sorting our data in ascending order, which means the lower values come first and the higher values go down, by doing this, we'll be able to bring all the negative values to the top of the data set and then we can remove them. So let's do this. 
One way to do this is to select the whole sheet. We go to data and we sort the range. When you click on sort range, you can go to the advanced range sorting options. You want to specify that data has a header row because your first row is a heading row and you want to sort them with respect to the fair amount. So you can sort by fair amount. We want to sort them from lowest to highest. So we let it be A to Z and then we sort. Once the sorting is done, you can see that all the rows with negative fair amounts, they will populate on the top of the screen. We can actually pick them up. So I'm scrolling to the last value, which is negative, so that I can select everything from there till the top. I also see a lot of zeros in here, which means many people didn't pay at all. You may want to decide if you want to keep them or delete them as well. We will keep them at the moment. So these are almost 400 data points, which we will remove now. You pick the one from where you want to start selection, and by pressing shift and selecting the other endpoint, you are now able to select all the data points between those two rows, right click and delete the selected rows. This will actually remove the data points with negative fair elements. We can now go to this descriptive stats again, and we can see here that the minimum value is indeed zero. With this, we are able to identify some more problems and fix them before proceeding. With this, we are also able to see with respect to the fair amount, what were people paying as a minimum and the maximum value and on an average. Now it's time for digging further into the data and we perform more exploratory data analysis. The first question, which is actually also part of the responsibility of a data analyst, is to identify what these questions are. What is it that we want to find out? What is it that may be important for the business? Before we start doing any kind of analysis, we need to take a step back and think about the questions that we want to answer. Defining these questions is as important as finding those answers. By looking at the data, some of the questions that we may be interested in is, for example, the pickup locations and the drop off locations. Is there a link between the two? How many times people are getting on at a certain point and dropping off at a certain location? or trip distance. What is the typical distance that people are traveling when they are using the taxi service? Is there a relation between passenger count and the trip distance? How are the people paying, for example, payment type? And is the payment type in any way connected to the vendor ID? All these questions are what we can explore further, but let's take a brief moment and note down all the questions that we need to answer so that we can start our analysis. And now we can dive deeper into the exploratory analysis. Let's say the four key questions that we want to identify are the following. The first one is pickup location frequency. We want to find out for each pickup location, how many times the ride was initiated at that point. The second question that we want to answer is the relation between the passenger count and the trip distance. The third one is basically about the payment statistics. So we want to identify what kind of payment modes people are using. And the fourth one is where we want to note if there is any relation and what is the relation between the payment types and the vendor ID. So let's now dig deeper into these questions one at a time. And we'll start with the pickup location frequency. To identify these relationships between the different data elements, the pivot tables actually are very helpful. They help us extract data points, group them together with respect to different parameters like counts, minimum, maximum, average, and so on and so forth, and help us visualize data in a concise way. Let's now have a look at how we can use pivot tables to answer these questions. Starting with pickup location frequency, we go to the insert menu and click pivot table. This will open a pop-up which will actually ask you where you want to create your pivot table. You select a new sheet. In this new sheet, you will see two sites. On the left side, you'll see the labels rows, columns, and values. And on the right side, you'll see a pivot table editor. 
what elements are we interested in? We are interested in the pickup location. So the rows that we want to pick up are the pickup location. So you start with an add and you specify pickup location. We are not done yet. We have only specified that the first part of this equation is handling the pickup location. So what we see here are all the pickup locations populated in a column, but we want to group them with respect to the frequencies. And what are frequencies? Frequencies are basically count. So what kind of values do we want? You can click the add for the values and you can specify that you want to have pickup location ID. Then you can specify that you want to count the pickup location IDs. With this, our table is complete now. So here, what you see is for the first pickup location, the ride was initiated five times. And similarly for location ID four, the ride was initiated 72 times. Before we do any processing on this one, it's better to always copy this data from the pivot table into a separate sheet so that we can make more changes in the pivot table to answer more questions without affecting our analysis. So let's now create a new sheet and copy data from here to that new sheet. You click the plus at the bottom left. It creates a new sheet. This is all about pickup location frequency. So we rename this as pickup location frequency. We'll type in the column names. So pickup location and frequency. Of course, you don't need to have the same names as in the original data set, but it should be something representative. And now you can go to your pivot table and copy the data. We need to be careful of copying not the whole columns because in that case, your pickup location frequency data points will be connected to the original pivot table. And in case you will make any change on this sheet, it will actually be affecting your other sheet. So just be careful and copy only the desired values. Let's copy these data points. Let's see how many data points do we have. They are almost 204. You select all of them, right click and copy. And now we come to the pickup location frequency sheet and paste them here. Of course, you can do a number of things just by looking at this data. So how about we simply sort them based on frequency and we'll be able to identify which is the most popular pickup location. You know how to sort the data here. You select the data points. You go to data, sort range. Under advanced range sorting options, your data has a data row, which you want to have as frequency. And this time we want to do it in descending order. So the highest value first. And when you sort them, you can see that, for example, the pickup location 237 was the most frequent one where 4,192 times uh, pickup of the right happened. And so on and so forth. With this, we have identified the first question that what is the frequency of our individual pickup locations? Now let's move on to our next question. The question number two is if there is any relationship between the passenger count and the trip distance. Let's go back to our pivot table and extract information for these two variables. We are back in our pivot table. We can remove the entries from the first question. And that's why it was important that this table is not linked to your real analysis. So the first variable that we have here is the passenger count. So let's add as rows passenger count. Now we have our passenger count. What's the other variable? That's the trip distance. So let's use values for trip distance. And here, what do we want to check? Let's say we want to have the average of the trip distances. So here we have our passenger count. And as we can see, there were passenger from zero to maximum six. And now let's see what's the average distance that they have been taking up in their trips. So in case of values, we want to get the trip distance, but this time we don't want to count that. We want to get the average of these distances. So here we have that. Just like before, we don't want to leave this data in our pivot table, 
rather we want to copy this into another sheet. So let's just do this now. We are creating a new sheet and naming it as passenger count versus trip distance. We have the two labels count, passenger count and trip distance. And now we can copy the data from our pivot table. So here we have our passenger count versus trip distance. And now we are good to go with question number three. Question number three is where we want to check the payment stats. We remove the existing elements from the pivot table as before. So we select the payment type and add values. So we have the payment type selected as rows and now we can add values for payment type. And again, this time we want to count. As before, we will copy this into a new sheet. And now we can copy the four values. And finally, we can move on to our fourth question. Our fourth question is a bit different. Here we want to compare the payment type with respect to the vendor ID. Let's see how we can do that. As before, remove the earlier element. So remove the payment type. The first variable that we want to talk about is the payment type and the second one is the variable. This one is going to be different from earlier because here we are not only talking about absolute counts, rather we want to relate two variables, payment type and vendor ID, and then compare them with their absolute count. So here we are not only talking about rows, rather rows and columns. So let's see how we can do this. So first you add the rows. Your payment type is your row, and now you can add the column, which is your vendor ID. And now you want to do the calculations for counting. You can count either of vendor ID or payment type. It will give you the same result. Now you see it's not just a two column table, rather it has four rows because there are four types of payments. And there are two columns because there are two types of vendors and each cell is actually corresponding to one payment type versus vendor ID. As before, we'll copy all this information to a separate sheet. We can see that for vendor number two, payment type three and four, there is no data apparently for vendor two, nobody actually used payment type three and four. That's basically it. With this, we are done with our initial exploratory analysis. In this video, you have learned how you can do descriptive statistics that actually helps you uncover patterns into the data and also identify further problems of your data. And you are able to answer several questions about your data by doing exploratory analysis. In the next tutorial, we'll see how we can visualize this data. Back to you, Will. Wow, thanks, Imara. That was a really exciting deep dive into descriptive statistics. Coming up in tutorial four, we're going to be looking at data visualization. We'll be showing you how to do graphs, charts, and visual displays for the data that we've covered so far. Thank you for making it so far, and congratulations for successfully completing tutorial three.